How's it going folks, Jerem Adrian here. Welcome back to the channel for another weekend MMO news drop. We've got a bunch of stuff to talk about, so let's get straight to it, beginning with Guild Wars 2. ArenaNet has revealed the trailer for Episode 2, Shadow in the Ice, for its Ice Brew Saga, and with it comes all the information we need to know. For story, it picks up right off where Episode 1 finished, and Bram appears to play a central role in this one. The episode will also contain an expanded map of the Biora Marches, new Raven Masteries, Tier 3 upgradable Boreal weapons which are illuminated now, a new armor set, a new strike mission, and the Drakkar world boss which was teased as the Shadow in the Ice. Episode 2 goes live on the 28th of January and will be free for everyone who owns the Path of Fire expansion. Next up, let's talk about some Elder Scrolls Online who late this week has revealed major details for its season this year, The Dark Heart of Skyrim. ESO players can look forward to three DLCs and a chapter again, and the first dungeon DLC is known as Harrowstorm, launching in quarter one and it will be on the PDS next week. As for the chapter, it's called Greymoor and will feature content underground in the Black Reach as well as Overland, with brand new activities and mechanics like the Antiquity System and you can pre-order the chapter already, right now. For a deeper dive into everything that was announced, I've got a separate video for that. Check it out in the card on the top right of the screen or with the link down below. We've got new information for Magic Legends as well, the upcoming Magic the Gathering MMO ARPG from Perfect World and Cryptic. In a recent press release, we've been given a window and timeline of when we can expect the game to enter beta and full release. For beta phase, Cryptic is aiming for Spring 2020, so we could see it as early as March. For the PC release, the timeline is still within 2020, but unfortunately for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One players, the console launch will take place next year in 2021. The beta will have the two new classes showed off recently, the Geomancer and the Mind Mage, and gameplay revolves around creating a deck of 12 cards, which will be used as skills to cast in combat and you can expect different card colors resembling different playstyles. These can be collected and upgraded down the line as part of the game's progression system, and the MMO gameplay will support co-op of up to four other players. You can sign up for the beta right now on the official Magic Legends website. For those who play or are waiting to play Lost Ark, there is some good stuff happening for the Korean version. This past week, Smilegate had its Lutheran New Year event with players and presented a ton of upcoming features and new stuff, coming to the game for Season 2, and to summarize it all, players can expect two new classes, a new continent, UI revamps, quality of life changes, a personal home island, a battle royale island, a new deep sea dungeon, new naval life skills, naval expeditions, gender lock removal for classes, photo mode, gameplay tweaks, and so much more. The scale and scope of Season 2 is huge, and the way the announcement was handled kind of reminds me of Prolobus and the grand conventions it does for Black Desert Online. We're not sure when the Russian version will get these, and the bad news for everyone else is that we will not see the Lost Ark version for North America and Europe in 2020. The Guardian class is only a few days away from global release on Black Desert Online, and all week players have already started pre-creating their characters. This past week, we also learned that the Guardian will receive its Awakening update very soon, two weeks after her arrival, in fact, on the 5th of February. After Awakening, Guardians will wield Yordun, a massive polearm that burns with the Holy Flame of Yinx, and it transitions the class into an AoE machine, allowing her to take on large groups of mobs at once. Elsewhere for BDO, another class has received its Succession skill update, and that's the Dark Knight. Lotro players, good news! The Lord of the Rings Online has announced that 2012's Riders of Rohan expansion will be coming to the legendary servers, aka the fresh start slow progression servers of Ithil and Anor, come next month. Riders of Rohan is on my top 3 list of favorite Lotro expansions ever for its questing and story, the sweeping landscape, and the soundtrack, but it also introduced mounted combat, and the less said about that, the better. Well, mid-February is the release date and Standing Stone Games will release more information closer to launch, but for now, I do believe that everyone who owns the expansion on the live servers will get access to it on the legendary servers. If not, you'll have to buy it again, and I do hope not at full price, because that would be kind of silly for an 8-year-old expansion, but it's Daybreak Games we're talking about here, so you never know. For fans of RVR-focused MMOs, good news regarding Crowfall, the Throne Simulator. 
Its studio, Artcraft Entertainment, has recently announced that it has successfully closed another round in funding to the grand tune of $12 million, which is just the start. Studio head Todd Coleman has also said that it's time for Crowfall to enter the launch phase, and players will see the beta launch in 2020 shortly after the release of Update 5.110, known as the War of the Gods. All game backers will have access to it as soon as it hits the test server, while registered non-backers will be sent invite codes in waves. In other areas, Crowfall has also been tweaking the game behind the scenes, and a UI revamp is the latest to emerge, with the game ditching the two-tray hotbar system where previously you had a combat skill tray and a survival skill tray. Moving forward, it's just going to be a single tray hotbar that's more in line with the typical MMORPG UI system. If you haven't registered for a chance at the beta, you can do so right now on the official website. Blade and Soul will be celebrating its 4th anniversary for the Western version next week on January 22nd, and all players are invited to the party. On the official website, you can register right now for the 4th anniversary gift pack, which features a full costume set and other in-game items for free, which will be claimable in-game between the 22nd of January and February 29th. Besides that, Ansysoft has events planned for the celebration like in-game happenings and the opening of a limited-time PvPVE region known as Hunter's Refuge, which will be accessible for a couple of hours daily until the 19th of February. Astelia may have shut down its Korean version under Nexon, but the Western version is showing signs of being here to stay, and the developers have released its January content preview, featuring new things to do in-game. Firstly, Legendary Dungeons 2.2 will be released with a couple to tackle like the Dimensional Library Basilla and the Haveli Mansion. The game will also release a couple of limited time events, including a 12-player boss fight, but no solid dates have been provided at the moment. There's some good news for players who want to play Astelia through Steam as well, as according to the store page, the Steam launch will take place on the 30th of January. Moving on, Cryptic's other free-to-play MMORPG, Neverwinter, has shared some information about the Avernus campaign, which goes live pretty soon for Neverwinter players on the PC. The official post dives deeper into what level 80 players can expect in the first-ever endgame campaign, and it says you should look forward to something similar to that of the Ravenloft module, which means a linear campaign story path and weekly hauls. As usual, there will be repeatable tasks, boons, and brand new rewards too. Check out the full detailed post via the link in the pinned comment. Hey, remember Echo of Soul? Well, if you don't, it's a buy-to-play Eastern MMORPG on Steam featuring the usual theme park gameplay, Asian cartoony characters, and a bland story. Well, the game is on sale right now for a ridiculous 90% off, which means you can pick it up for the low price of 89 cents. This is not a joke, 89 cents for a buy-to-play MMORPG. It's hilarious and sad in a way because it reeks of desperation and I can only assume that it's a last cash grab attempt or a plea for new players as the player numbers must be really low. Either way, if you want to check it out at that price, the sale ends on the 20th of January. And last but not least, it has been a while since we've heard from Last Oasis, a new steampunk style survival MMO that will be hitting early access in the early part of 2020. The developers have released a brief shiny new gameplay trailer, which is on screen right now, showing off more combat, gameplay, and of course those massive land ships in which you'll do battle with. And they appear to be the main attraction of the game, of course. I'll keep you guys posted as we get more info about when it's launching, some system breakdowns, and all that good stuff. And that's all I've got for now, folks. So if there's news for a game that you play which isn't covered here in this video, share it with the rest of us down in the comments. Have a great weekend, everyone. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this news drops, and if you're new to the channel, subscribe. It's free, and that bell icon you see will let you know when there's a new video up right on the dot if you click it. Once again, I'm Jerem Adrian, and I thank you for watching.